Thanks for stopping in, folks. I know it's the weekend. You probably got better things to do, so I especially appreciate your time. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and it is the weekend. It's Friday, October 21st. Now, as most of you are probably already aware, what we do on this show is look at OTC and penny stocks. I like to bring you stocks that have potential to make you gains. Now, maybe those gains are going to come quickly. Maybe you have to hold the stock a little longer. In either case, these are companies you should be considering. Now, when I say OTC and penny stocks, I'm not being redundant. There is a difference between the two. You know what the OTC market is, and there's lots of penny stocks on the OTC market, but there's also lots of penny stocks on the major exchanges because the literal definition of a penny stock is any stock under $5 regardless of what market it's on. So we could easily be looking at stocks on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange under $5. But most of the stocks we look at are on the OTC market. I do a lot of research on the OTC market stocks. Matter of fact, that news right there is news I've personally read each and every one of those over the last six or seven days. Your oldest news is at the top. Your newest news is down here at the bottom. And that's good news. Prime news, folks. We're talking about the mergers, the acquisitions, the joint ventures, new distribution deals, new technology, no financials, no public offerings. This is the news you'd want to find if you were searching through it. So take your time. Search through that. I bet you find something that interests you. Now, as I said, I do a lot of research on OTC stocks. And if I just went out to the internet, I would be wasting a ton of time. Honestly, folks, start your research here at the OTCMarkets.com website. This is the only site I know of that is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. So why waste your time running around looking for what you want when it's right here? And if by chance you can't find it, don't worry. The internet's out there waiting for you to trudge back to it. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. It's not pretty, folks. That's the bottom line. It was another slow, sad day with a lot of low numbers. Our dollar volume, which used to be 2.1 billion a couple months ago, we're down to 1.5 billion. It's a sad state of affairs. Our share volume is falling again. I think the last time we talked, we were at 7 billion. We have cracked the double digits, over 10 billion, even over 13 billion. I think three times this month. And we thrive a little bit better. The OTC is stronger with double digit share volume but right now we are way down at 6.6 .6. and our trades folks we're getting nowhere fast we have been stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades I don't know when the last time was we were but well we did crack it I think last month one time so that you've got that but outside of that the average is normally 600,000 trades a day 700,000 trades so we are way way down lucky us there is always stocks jumping and bumping regardless of the condition of the market as a whole. And I've got some of those to share with you today. Thank goodness. Come on, let me show you what I got. Jumping into the first company, this is Exceptional Business Services, ticker XCPL. Real popular company today. They did over 900 trades. You could think of that as almost 900 people trading this stock today. That's a small crowd. You're gonna get price action there. But they did all of this without any fresh news, any fresh filings today. Now they have had recent news at the beginning of September. It was pretty big. We're gonna take a look at it. And they just finished off a Zoom shareholder meeting. And I think it must have been a really, really good meeting because that's where I'm thinking that the gains came from today. But that is just a presumption. They finished today at 0038 with over 35% gains. They're on the pink tier. They're current. They have a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. Now, these are real important ticks, especially if you're in a stock for a long hold. The longer you're holding a stock, the more important these are because there's a lot of important, validated information that's represented by these ticks. But if you're just trading the stock for a day trade, you're in, you're out. That's not going to make any difference to you one way or the other. So what does Exceptional do? They tell us that they're a venture tech firm focused on the development of software as a service products and crypto as a service platforms. You got to love a company that works with digital products. Very little overhead with them. So what was the relative volume around this company today considering she didn't have any real catalysts? Wow. That's pretty impressive. Jump from 21 million shares to 168 million shares. That's like eight times her normal volume without any catalyst. That is impressive. Share structure. 
not real impressive <laughs> i go to the unrestricted shares it's not always right but that's what i use it's normally close and we don't have a whole lot of choices here so it looks like we got 338 million shares in the float not a low float by any means but since we can't change it i guess we're gonna live with it financials for this company oh what happened exceptional wow what a drop what a bang for the last three years she's been doing millions of dollars worth of business you got to add three zeros to any of these numbers so they did eight million nine million six million over the last three years and then boom dropped to just over a half a million dollars something has happened here and something happened last year too they generated 6.4 million and only got to keep 200,000 Ooh, quarterly what's it look like very strange very strange indeed first quarter they did five thousand dollars and this last quarter they did just over a half a million and they're not paying anything for the money they're making well it's either digital products that they've got going out or they're doing consultancy it doesn't cost anything to talk to somebody disclosures well we know their financials are all going to be caught up because they're current right absolutely and their sec filings uh you got an sc 13g here which really isn't going to cause the stock to move not really it's talking about a particular person who owns so many shares for voting power and stuff like that and unless it's a change of control really doesn't have a whole lot of effect on the price let's take a look at that news then all right, I've got three pieces of news here I want to share with you I think are definitely worthy of taking a look at. First one is that one I was telling you about at the beginning of September. They had a merger. Then they had a share reduction and their Zoom webinar shareholder meeting. And we're just going to go from each news press to the next one. So this news press came out September 1st. Exceptional Business Services successfully completes reverse merger acquisition agreements with Sentiment Capital Holdings. Sentiment Capital Holdings, they are a privately held neural data technology company that came with two subsidiaries. So Exceptional got a twofer in this deal. They got the subsidiary Advanced Research Machines and Exercis Trading Holdings. Now, Advanced Research Machines is the company behind the Mantis crypto trading technology, and they own Sentiment.io. And Exercis is a multi-asset class trading technology and will complement ARM's high-frequency trading platform. The next piece of news came out in October. October 5th, they did a share reduction, but only to the authorized shares. They did take off a lot. They took off $250 million, leaving them a half a billion shares authorized. That's their bank. This doesn't affect the float or the outstanding shares whatsoever. And the last piece of news came out on the 18th of October. Uh, they had a webinar that was set for the 18th, which was just a couple days ago. And as I said, I'm thinking that was the stirring of the pot that got investors all excited and they wanted more. Now, I don't know if there was 900 shareholders. Maybe they went and told their friends, whatever it was. There was a lot of trades today and the stock has been moving up in a new trend. Let's go take a look at that chart and I'll show you what I'm talking about. As always, we're over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You can get it too. Just sign up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. We are looking at XCPL six month, four hour chart here. We've been here before. The last time we looked at this company was March 30th, which coincidentally happens to be the day she has her high bubble. This is about two and a half cents, and about five days ago, we fell to double zero one five. Now, would you believe there was no catalyst? on this big run? Not a parent, not one that I can find, maybe a tweet or something. The catalysts are actually on the 15th when they had an announcement of the letter of intent with Sediment Holdings. And then here on the 22nd, they made a deal with Green Star Products, I believe it is, and we didn't even look at them, but not on the 30th. And yet she ran almost 400% here, getting rid of all the zeros that went from six to 24 came tumbling back down the hill and has been rolling downhill for quite a while. Had another big bounce here on sentiment holding news. This is when they announced a reverse merger. So we have two huge jumps just on news of getting with sentiment holdings. So it means something to them. But again, she went back to falling downhill till she hit this low bubble. Funny thing is, as you can see, the volume is starting to increase right now. Absolutely is. Everything is bouncing off of that low bubble and they just tapped onto the 200 day SMA for the third time. One, two, 
three and they did break it really hard today but would you believe she is just under it the 200 day sma is at double zero three nine she's at three eight so she's right underneath it with a lot of volume supporting her technicals have been climbing for a while here and they're all showing signs of getting hot the bubbles in the pot are getting bigger let's take a look at our 20 day one hour view so she was under the 200 day SMA on the one hour chart, really broke it hard here about two weeks ago, and then tumbled for, man, 10 days down to this low bubble we just identified, 0015, has jumped off of it to get over the 200, struggling to stay up there, she's bouncing off of it, and has hit a high down here of 0053, which is about 300% gains from that low bubble in the last four days. And you can definitely see that volume is increasing. Technicals are still warm, but they are showing signs of this pullback right there. Five day, five minute. Well, she has had a change of trend. She has had some big dips in here, but look at our 200. That was coming downhill, and somewhere in this roly-poly area, it decided it wanted to start going up. So this should help pull the price up with it. Our technicals are in recovery right now. We got a crossover on our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, which is a lot like the MACD, except it only uses part of the price. MACD uses the full price. It too has just had a crossover and approaching the signal line, though that pullback right there is showing signs and the RSI is pretty weak right now. So, you know, the company's got a lot going on. They just did have a new merger. They got two subsidiaries that are working with digital platform software as a service crypto as a service platform so they've got businesses they haven't actually got going yet the revenues are a bit strange at this point in time but they've got something going on and people are looking at it right now so for no other reason because the company's in good condition investors are paying attention to it and the price is starting to rise with a trend change I would put XCPL on your charts and watch for those days when volume comes running into this. She could take off and you could get yourself a good gain just for paying attention. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with this next company. This is TXTM Protex Mobility. We have talked about them a few times. First time was I think in June of this year when they made a huge deal with a South African cannabis company. However, the company does have more going on than just that and I want to cover those details because today she got a lot of attention. TXTM had over 550 trades. That's like over 500 people probably that were trading this company. That's a small crowd. You've got to ask yourself, why is everybody paying attention to the company now? But not just TXTM, also their subsidiary. They own Plandi Biotechnology, which is also on the OTC market, ticker PLPL. It too was rising today, and neither company has any new news or fresh filings. But what we do have is a tweet from yesterday and a tweet today from the co-owners of that South African cannabis company. And it's got the imaginations of the investors running. And I think that's exactly why she's taken off now and exactly why we should be taking a look at it. So she finished the day at 0 0.0123 with over 18% gains on the pink tier and current and got those luscious green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Now, as I said, the company's involved with more than just that merger with the South African Cannabis Company. Protex Pharma Inc. operates two wholly owned subsidiaries, Plandi Biotechnologies out of South Africa and Cannabis Biosciences. Now, Plandi Biotechnology, one that's on the OTC under ticker PLPL, has the exclusive worldwide license to develop pharmaceutical applications and products using a Fair Ketchin complex. This is a new novel drug they're working on to help people with diabetes. The other subsidiary they got is Cannabis Biosciences. They've developed a proprietary processing and extraction technology that utilizes live plants for producing a full profile cannabis extract that contains the precursor acid form of THC. This is different than everybody else's extraction. They call it kettle. They're actually pulling out the CBDs and the THC from live plants, which they say makes a huge difference. Now, I am going to focus more in on TXTM, but I want you to see their subsidiary, PLPL. This is Plandi Biotechnology, finished today at 001, 
Oh, folks, that is a delicious price. I love it. It's one of my favorites. You buy it double zero one, it hits double zero two, you've doubled your money. I know that's common sense, but most people really don't think about it when they see that price. You buy it right now, all it has to do is move that much and you've made 100% gains. If you buy it at 004, it's got to go all the way to 008 before you double your money. So doesn't it make sense when you get the opportunity to buy something at 001 to do it? As soon as it hits 002, 100%, 003, 200% and on and on. Love that double zero one. They did 25% gains today on the pink tier. Also got those green ticks and they're a shell company. They're not making any money right now. They are doing work, but they're not actually in business. Now I find this real interesting in their business description. No potential merger candidate has been identified at this time. That's what they've been looking for. Well, we just had news come out. This news came out October 6th. Plandi Biotechnologies announces its entry into a non-binding letter of intent with EV Hotel Corp, a U.S. company based out of Georgia. And just for the record, EV does not stand for electric vehicles. EV Hotel developed the world's first proprietary disruptive hospitality platform they call the Smart Hotel. Combining technologies of automation, internet of things, crypto, and NFTs with the best-in-class service, stylish design, and upscale amenities to deliver a more efficient hotel operation, happier guests, and more streams of revenue. And that's the bottom line here, folks. You got to remember, this company is a shell company. They have no business that's generating any revenues. But more to the point, they're an R&D. They're still working on trying to find a miracle fix for diabetes with their Fidofair, and that costs money, all that research. And if they're not generating their own revenues, they got to get that money from somewhere, and they're going to get it from their investors. So this is really good news. Now, they're not going to just be making money off the hotels. They tell us down here that they're going to be selling NFTs and other things. And the NFTs come with some sort of lifetime memberships and stuff like that. So they're doing a lot, and they've got one hotel they're just getting ready to launch. EV Hotel operates a franchise model and its first franchisee is obtaining permits and converting a 63-year-old 114-room travel lodge into Phoenix, Arizona's first ever smart hotel. And they are also finishing up a two-year audit. Now, this is real important. This tells you that they do have plans to move forward. Normally, you have to have your financials audited if you're going to uplist. To the QB, for example, you have to have your financials audited to exist on the QB. So maybe they have plans to uplist. You'll know if they're serious about it because right here underneath that shell, you will see independent directors pop up. You have to have independent directors if you're going to uplist. So if we see those pop up here, we know what's going on. Now, we are really looking at TXTM, but I wanted you to see the subsidiary that is making news and is climbing today along with her. But I want to focus back on TXTM, which is really the company we're looking at. I want to take a look at this news where it all began, June 13th with the acquisition. Republic of South Africa Medical Marijuana Dispensaries Acquisitions completes acquisition of Protex Mobility. Now, with your permission, I'm not going to call this company that big old long name. I'm not even going to use their abbreviation. Even that's a mouthful. So I'm just going to call this company RSAM, just to make it easy on everybody. RSAM is owned by two gentlemen, Mr. Pluey and Dr. Amid Jamaluddin. Thank God we get to call him Dr. J. So these two gentlemen own RSAM, and RSAM is a South African pioneer in the research, cultivation, production, and distribution of medical cannabis and cannabinoids. That sounds like they are vertically integrated. Leeds Broidery, which is a 5,000 heca acre farm, is controlled by Dr. J, who also controls the federally issued cannabis and hemp licenses issued by the government of South Africa. Sounds like Dr. J is the head man over there. In South Africa right now, we have just completed our semi-annual grow. Our SAM in joint venture with Leeds Broidery cultivated hemp and cannabis crops this past season on a combined 1,000 plus heca acres. So they got a lot of raw materials right now. And the last piece of news I think is real relevant, hasn't got anything to do with the tweets, but it is important. This came out at the beginning of September. TXTM is pleased to announce its chairman, Dr. J, has received the honor of being appointed as Hemp Production Ambassador 
for the government. Folks, we're not just saying that the government's given this company permission. They've given them cooperation. They're working hand in hand with this company and giving them authority, just like cartel over in South Korea. So the company's got some strength, some good footing in this country. Now, I want to share these tweets with you because that's why the company's running today. All right, let's take a look at these tweets. I got three of them that have come out in the last two days by the owners of Arsam, Mr. Pluey and Dr. J. Now, Dr. J started it all off with a very cryptic tweet, and then Mr. Pluey came back behind him and added some more information, and like I said, it got the imaginations of the investors running wild. This is the tweet that came out by Dr. J yesterday. Humor. How can one of these CBD capsules be worth more than a TXTM share? I mean, it's like the cost of a single cash withdrawal from the ATM of the bank costing more than a share in that bank. Okay, Dr. J, what are you trying to say, dude? We're not real sure, but Mr. Pluey came behind that with a comment. He says, we have more caps in stock at the lab than the entire TXTM outstanding share count. Okay, how many shares are in the outstanding share count? 8.3 billion. So they're telling us they have more than 8.3 billion CBD capsules. All right, that's impressive, but what are you trying to say? I mean, I think I'm getting the drift here, but can you be a little more clear about it? Well, Mr. Pluey put out another tweet today. TXTM, class is in session. Math lesson, anybody? And then he breaks it down. 15 milligram CBD capsules. Say we're working with 8.3 billion caps, which is the same outstanding share count as TXTM, coincidentally. So 8.3 billion caps at $2 a capsule is $16.6 .6 billion in revenue. Oh my God, that is just incredible. Now, I don't know how long it takes to sell 8 billion capsules, but that's a lot of potential sitting in the warehouse. Now, I'm not real sure what this means. Everyone is saying $4. Uh, what? $4 a share? $4 a capsule? If it's $4 a capsule, well, that gives them $32 billion worth of revenue. Whoa! And if that's $4 a share, oh my God, folks, we're going to be rich. <laughs> so I don't know which way it goes, but either way, you can see the potential here. And even to expound on that potential, he does some math down here. And basically all he's trying to show you is that they have 5,000 heca acres and they have only been working with 340 heca acres to produce that 8.3 billion capsules. So how much would they have if they actually had all 5,000 heca acres in, in the deal right now? A lot lot more. Like I said, the imagination is just going wild here. Lots and lots of money, lots of potential. And this isn't something they're going to do. They're telling us they've already got over 8 billion CBD capsules in the warehouse. So the potential here is a reality that should come to fruition soon. All right, let's go take a look at that chart for TXTM and we'll take a peekaboo at PLPL as well. So I got both tickers up on the charts, PLPL over here and TXTM here. We're going to look at TX first. If it looks like I'm forgetting PL, somebody please remind me before we leave. All right, TXTM. I told you we had looked at this a couple times already, and this is our six-month, four-hour chart. And according to my lines, we've been here twice. October 11th and this huge run back in the middle of June. Now this is impressive folks. In six days, she went from 002 to two cents. That is a thousand percent run, 10 times your investment. Now what's really peculiar about this run is it did start on June 13th and there is no apparent catalyst on June 13th. That is to say there's no fresh filings, there's no new news. As a matter of fact, there is no news at all in June for this company. So what the heck had this company jumping a thousand percent? Tweets. This company was tweeting the heck out of the deal between them and the South African cannabis company. All of their tweets generated all of these gains. No news, no filings, 100% Twitter. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it and I think they're doing it again right now.
They had a huge fall, lots of volatility, but she virtually came right back to where it all started from as if nothing even happened. She did have a nice recovery here. You got about 30 days of rise. Did anybody notice this? Then we got a lot of volatility coming into the picture and now it looks like she's pushing back up. Now you can see there's no extra volume coming in right now. Nothing to show you there's a lot of excitement. So if you see volume come in, first thing I would do is run over to Twitter and see if they've posted something. And when you see their posts come in, I would get ready for a run, folks. I seriously would. And right now on the four hour, it looks like we are ready for a recovery. Things are just now getting into place. We have a crossover on our PPO imminent, just about ready to happen, just like we do on our MACD, coming across the signal line. And our RSI is at 55 right now and rising. Let's take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So she is on an uptrend right now, but she had a bad day the other day. Holy cow, what a fall. She crushed her 200 day SMA after not even coming close to it for 20 days and came back up like a rubber ball, really. She came down underwater and then came back up and just kind of glug, 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 floated on the top right here. And then some seagull came along and grabbed the price and pulled it up. But again, you don't see any extra volume here. However, our technicals do show heat is building up. Everything is pointing up right now and looking like it's getting stronger. Five day, five minute. All right, so we had a huge drop here a few days ago. Fell off of her 200 day SMA, hitting a low bubble here of 0084. Got back on top of her 200 and is pushing up and falling again, testing her 20 day SMA. And looking at the technicals, she looks like she wants to continue to fall. I would presume that she was probably, since she's sitting on the 50-day SMA so hard here, I would expect her to come back down to the 50-day SMA before she bounces, but we're going to have to watch her. But what you really need to watch, and I know I always say that the charts take precedent, but in this case, I'm going to shuffle it over to Twitter. Watch TXTM's Twitter account. If they put out a tweet, chances are things are going to start to move. And they like to build tweet on top of tweet on top of tweet. So once it begins, I don't know how far it can go, but I think it's worth a watch. Now let's take a look at PLPL. Let's see what they've been doing for the last six months. That's five minutes. Let's kick that on out for us right there. All right, she was under the 200, got on top of it, sat there for a long time, had this humongous roll over here, came right back down, right back down and is sitting in that same position and now we got a mini rollover. All you can really say is right now she has been fighting to stay on top of the 200. She came beneath it, bounced off that 50 and has put herself back on the 200 with the nine day about ready to cross the 20 day SMA, which is a good sign. Our technicals do show strength building up. We've had a crossover on our MACD and our PPO is pushing up and our RSI is just approaching 60. 20 day, one hour view. So she had a jump off of her 200. She put herself way up here just over 001. She did take a dip back down to the 200 and has pushed herself right back up and the technicals show she wants to continue growing. Every single one of these is pointing up right now. Five day, five minute. All right, she's had one step up over these last five days and has just been sitting here, but she's sitting on top of her 200 day SMA. Technicals actually look good. Looks like they're ready to take another step up. And remember, we are at a fantastic buy price. It is double zero one. It only takes a smidge to get the double zero two and boom, you've got yourself 100% gains. And if it's catching momentum and moves to double zero three, you have just, 200% of your money. I think that's triple your money. <laughs> you get my drift. It just grows really fast when you buy on the ones. Now we are looking at TXTM, but PLPL is one of their subsidiaries. They make money off of it as well. And it was rising today with those tweets because it hasn't got any news either. So I keep my eye on PLPL whenever TMTX rises. TXTM. Whew. Can we get away from these? All right, folks, one more stock I got to share with you. 
Last company we're taking a look at is ticker CNNA. This is Can American Core. Was a very popular stock today. She had over 500 trades, and that with no fresh news and no filings. She jumped on a tweet. That's right, she sure did. The tweet came out today. It was a reminder tweet from one they put out on October 12th, and it was enough to get everybody excited all over again. She finished today at 0 .0082 with over 115% gains on a simple tweet. They're on the pink tier and current, and they've got those green ticks, so everything looks good here. Now, this is an American-based cannabis hemp company out of California, but they are a holdings company. They help other cannabis companies. Matter of fact, we'll jump over to their website. They have three subsidiaries, three divisions that they're working with. Hourglass Enterprises, which helps the Oklahoma cannabis industry. They help companies get up and running, help them to get their products on the shelf. They also have Canquipped, which is their R&D arm of this company, research and development. And they just recently got themselves a delivery company, Canagram, where they're going to bring cannabis to your door. So what was the relative volume today around that simple tweet? You got to be kidding me. Oh my God, what? From just about a half a million shares to 47 million shares. You're looking at almost a hundred times increase in her volume just for a simple tweet. My God, share structure. All right, I went and looked this one up because I got three different numbers here that are totally different and I wasn't sure which one it would be. I normally go to unrestricted shares. I would have been wrong. I went into their disclosure. It is 127 million for this company. Financials, what sort of money is this company making? Really? They're not making any money here in the last couple of years. Quarterly, nothing coming in and it doesn't say shell company over here so they haven't had any revenues in quite a while and i'm not sure what's going on here maybe some more due diligence i would have thought they would have so no income but not a shell company mm. disclosures let's see what we got down here uh we haven't got anything since june and i don't think we have any news but we're gonna look i think it's all about that tweet we had news back in July. Um, let me see. Uh, CanCore announces retail placement and expanded product line. Uh, they have canceled over 3 million common shares, announces hemp farming lease, and their Canagram is being featured at the California State Fair. So they got a lot of things going on, just don't see any revenues coming in. So let's take a look at that tweet. So this tweet comes directly from the company's own Twitter account, easy name to remember, CNNA. Their first tweet came out on October 12th that we need to look at. Per last tweet, there is an offer in progress to acquire CNNA. The purchase will result in a new merger with strong revenue, change in management and expansion into new sectors. The deal will increase shareholder value and allow current management to focus on other endeavors detailed press release soon and then today they came out with another tweet per inquiries we anticipate a press release with details on the incoming cnna merger deal early next week so there you go folks speculation it jumped today based on speculation i want to be in first and i don't know if there's going to be any more bounce there could be some more excitement a lot of anticipation but I'm thinking that when this news does come out, it's going to be a virgin voicing. The first time he's ever told them about this company and what they're doing. And virgin voicings get the biggest bounces. The first time we hear about any deal is the biggest bounce. Doesn't matter how close they get to the deal and how much work they do on it after that. You just don't get as big a bounce as the initial virgin hearing. So I'm expecting a big bounce out of this and I don't even know what it's about. But I'm hoping there's some room on the chart to grow after today's big bounce of 115%. Let's go take a look. We are taking a look at Canna, ticker CNNA. This is a six month, four hour chart. She has predominantly been under the 200 this entire time, but she's been fighting to get through that 200 and she's had a lot of strong days. Look at all these spikes, folks, all the way down. 
Speaking of spikes, look at the one we had today. It is huge. And at volume, nothing. Nothing before today compares to that. And all of our technicals look like we have just launched the Apollo to the moon, folks. Everything is screaming up. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Absolutely nothing going on any day but today. It's the only day with any volume. She has pushed herself way up fast. And our technicals, everything is still hot, hot, hot. Nothing shows any signs of cooling down. Five day, five minute. Well, look at that. Somebody must have knew something yesterday. This is at 3.30 yesterday afternoon. She started the rise. And you can see this is all part of the same trend. So somebody knew something. Bell went off today and it just kept moving up. And it hit at its high here at, oh my God, 3.15 in the afternoon. So she was running up all day. And she pretty much kept everything she put on the table. And all the technicals are still hot. Nothing has cooled down yet. So everybody is just sitting there waiting for Canada to come out with this news press. And it's supposed to come out early sometime this next week. I would put CNNA on my watch list. She's holding her goods right now. Chances are she's going to continue to rise on Monday, especially if he puts out another tweet. Now, I wouldn't count on another tweet, but I would be watching for their news press. When that news press comes out, I am anticipating a big bounce, and I don't have any clue what it's going to be, but it's probably going to be the first time the investors have heard anything about this with Canna. So I expect a nice jump. Short-lived as it may be, most likely I am expecting a nice bump. So keep your eye on CNNA next week. So we got three stocks here that other investors have been watching. We know they've been watching them because they have high numbers of trades. Exceptional at 500 trades today. Yeah, the financials look a little wonky. The charts look pretty good. The trend is changing. It's come down now and is starting to come up. And they are doing business. So if other investors are paying attention to it, we should too. Doesn't cost you anything to put the ticker on your watch list. Then you have TXTM. Well, holy cow, this is a startup company in South Africa with the government's approval and cooperation. And they have got 8.6 billion CBD tabs, that's what they say, that they can sell at $2 each. That's over $16 billion. They haven't started making any revenues yet, but when they do, it could be a landslide, couldn't it? And last but not least is Canna, C-N-N-A. Uh, they are bringing out a news press sometime this week, early they said, and they're going to tell us about a new merger deal, a new acquisition that's going to give shareholder value. Everybody's expecting this, and because it's the first time we're going to hear it, I am expecting a nice jump off this. But you got to catch the news when it comes out. Not just today, but the minute. You need to be watching the news or you'll miss the initial surge on it. So there you go, folks. Three stocks you need to be considering, but you can find a lot more just by doing your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.